Welcome to Agenda Africa 2013, organized by Iberia Lawyer. It's a pleasure to introduce Keith Hughes from Vincent and Elkings to moderate the third part focusing on Mozambique, the quiet success story. So our first speaker will we'll be addressing the mega project legislation. Uh, Nuno is a partner at the Miranda Law Firm focusing on energy and mining <coughs> projects in Mozambique in particular, and we look forward to being educated. Thank you, Kit. Uh, well, in my brief, I will try to give you a very short uh, overview um, of this so-called mega-projects legislation. It is, it is made of a mega-projects law that was enacted uh, in 2011. It, it basically applies to any sort of relationship between the state and the private party. It actually provides the umbrella for any investment that is being made in the country. The mega project law specifically says that it applies also to the natural resources sector. There were huge fiscal benefits, special privileges that were awarded to these to this projects. I think that Mozambique truly wants to capitalize on its position as an emerging gas uh, um, power uh, and an emerging coal power um, well, in Africa and, and in the world. It wants to um, increase its fiscal revenue, and most importantly, it wants to create the conditions to local participation in these projects. There are three uh, benefits which, well, are a bit more controversial and have um, uh, a larger impact on the way uh, projects are, are structured. The first is the mandatory participation of Mozambican people in any project that is developed in Mozambique. The law further says that those shares in the projects shall be offered at a price that allows low-income Mozambican people to acquire them. The second financial benefit is the mandatory participation of Mozambican companies in the projects. And the last um, mandatory financial benefit is a provision in the regulation saying that any project must generate to the Mozambican government at least, uh, well, an amount equivalent to at least 35% of the revenue generated in each fiscal year. Uh, there are many other uh, important features in the mega project legislation, but the most important message is this. We want to participate in the exploitation of our own natural resources, and we want to do it with a strong uh, local component. With respect to the local content, to what extent do you think that companies coming in and providing training, I mean, we were talking in the context of Africa-wide, how often it's a problem with the best of intentions in order to, to do your job and develop. You need to train people. And We've been seeing in practical terms the Ministry of Labor and the CPI when negotiating the foreign quotas that are awarded to companies, that they allow foreign companies to employ expats uh, in a number which is above the quota. Uh, but in return, they demand well-developed training programs and written commitments that they will employ and train Mozambican uh, employees. Our next speaker is Tiago Ferreira de Matos, who is counsel at Odebrecht. Uh, he's responsible for the MENA markets and Portugal. Tiago will be addressing project and infrastructure, a world of opportunities in Mozambique. Thanks. I would just like to start with brief ideas that we have heard this morning. Um, we know that the country has been living a, a remarkable performance in terms of, of, of GDP growth uh, in an average of 7.2% uh, during this last decade. Uh, all of this was based in the strong performance of the finance sector, transport and communications, as well as construction. But there is a huge potential of growth of the country if we consider um, three factors. Mozambique is extremely dependent on the demand in India, China, and, and even Brazil uh, in terms of coal. So uh, the demand will increase in those countries with immediate effect in relation to Mozambique. The second issue is the discoveries of uh, natural gas reserves. It's a new trend in Mozambique. Uh, the potential is enormous. We, we, we've seen here today that Mozambique uh, may have one of the two largest uh, reserved in the world. The third is the oil discoveries, and all of this leads to an ambitious investment pro program for infrastructures that is being put in place in the country. We have a new Mozambique due to these specific facts. The first question that we need to, to raise here is what does all of this mean in terms of projects and infrastructure? 
It means that more than 30 billion worth of projects are already planned or in the way, 22, million of which, uh, 22 billion sorry, of which are addressed to the transport sector, 9.71 billion are addressed to the energy and power sector. Uh, this will mean a strong growth of the infrastructure market. The main sectors uh, which will receive this investment are the, the four that I would uh, uh, highlight here. It's coal, natural gas, the transport, uh, in relation to transport uh, infrastructure, we have roads. The second stage of the road program is being implemented in, a, in an amount of 1.5 billion. We have airports. Odbrecht is actually building the international airport of Nakala, but I would focus my attention on the transport infrastructure of railways and ports. And within those, I would highlight the Senna corridor that is being currently used by Vale and Rio Tinto to export their coal. It's a, a provisional solution taking into account its lack of capacity together with the needs of the Port of Vera uh, for dredging and uh, that way uh, being able to receive large ships to export coal, which is not the case of the Nakala Corridor. In terms of power, a interesting fact is that Mozambique, despite the fact that it, it is the largest ex exporter of power to South Africa, the truth is that only 36% of the country is currently electrified, so it shows uh, the needs of the country in terms of power infrastructure, not only in terms of generation, but also in terms of the transmission. The most important project of all is in the transmission side. It's the Sesul project, also known as the, the electric backbone of the country. It's the connection between the north and the south of the country. It will allow hydro plants in the north of the country to uh, sell their electricity to South Africa, which is the major consumer in the region, but also to other uh, countries of the region, and without the CESU project being implemented, it's very difficult for other sectors to comply with the expectations that we currently have. Uh, the truth is that until now, uh, the private sector has been financing the projects, it's especially the rich cash mining companies that are uh, following a, a build-your-own approach. We need to find solutions on how to finance those projects and put them uh, into place. Our, our next piece will be presented by Paolo de Barros Baptista who will be speaking on different models of financing projects. I think that uh, we are all aware that the infrastructure opportunities in Mozambique now abound. And it's worth mentioning that according to recent studies, the lack of adequate infrastructure estimated to cut productivity across all the continent, all the African continent, by as much as 40%. Mozambique is largely dependent on uh, development aid for capital investments. But donations are either insufficient for the ambitious infrastructure program or too overly restrictive to close this infrastructure gap. Then other non-conventional sources of financing, besides the donations, currently in place, uh, the private sector, and I think that some countries like Brazil, China, and, and China, and Portugal are, are taking this approach of using their development banks to finance the um, major projects. We, we at VDA, we advised the, the National Road Authority, Fund Estradas, in one of these projects, the Ponte de Tet, that was uh, financed by Caixa Geral Deposit. But they, these are financing that are granted to the Mozambique government most of the times. Then we have the newly created Banco Nacional de Investimento, which is the Mozambique's development bank, but for the time being, still with no sufficient liquidity to support the country's infrastructure needs. There is no need for adopting new structures or any exotic mechanisms, because the ones that have already been tested and adopted worldwide, uh, like project finance and ring fencing technology, is, are also possible in, in Mozambique. We have the, the new PPP and mega projects law that Nun just mentioned, so we have a steady legal environment. We have also in Mozambique some past experience of project finance, uh, just to mention the N4 example. The N4, it's the 600 kilometers road linking Pretoria to Maputo, but it was one of the largest and the first project finance ever to occur in South Africa. This is a 30 years built operating transfer. It was awarded to uh, South African companies, and the debt package was provided by four MLAs, uh, mostly South African, and also by the Development Bank of South Africa. Another favorable issue is that arbitration is possible and expeditious in Mozambique. As from 1998, Mozambique acceded to the New York Convention for the recognition of foreign arbitral awards. 
So I think bottom line is that there's no need to invent a new structure, a new contractual structure, because what we have, what we've been implementing, either in Portugal, in UK, worldwide, the, con the contractual structure can be uh, exactly the same with these specific issues in, in when being applied in, in Mozambique.